first up at 10 o'clock, NTSB investigators now trying to piece together how this private jet lost both of its engines before crashing on I-75 just south of the Tampa Bay area today. Five people were on board. The plane went down and hit a vehicle on the interstate, and authorities say two people died. Fox 13's Chris Cato joins us now with some incredible first-hand accounts from the crash. I can't even imagine what these poor drivers, much less those on the plane, were thinking about. Well, remember, we're just eight days removed from yeah. a small plane crashing into a mobile home park in Clearwater, killing three people. And now this, and when you see this flaming wreckage, Mark, it is hard to fathom how someone could survive this. But we know that at least three people who were on that plane did survive. What remains unclear at this hour is the fate of the driver of the vehicle that the plane smashed into. Oh my God, oh my God, what the? <gasps> Southbound I-75 in Collier County shut down for hours Friday after a private jet crashed on the interstate, hitting a vehicle and a barrier wall before erupting in flames. Oh, I feel the heat. Yeah, oh yeah, I feel it. It's hot, uh, I can hear it. The plane was headed to Naples Airport from Columbus, Ohio, when the pilot told air traffic controllers he lost both engines and couldn't make it to the runway. They would have had seconds, not minutes. Richard Collins, a pilot who lives beside the interstate, heard the crash. A uh, loud thud. It was a unique thud, not something you ever heard before. It wasn't an explosion at all, was not, nothing like that. It was a, um, that's how I describe it, something impacting the earth in, in a thud um, directly behind the wall. Authorities say five people were on board the plane and two people were killed in the crash, but they have not said yet if the victims were in the plane or in the vehicle that was hit by it. Witnesses describe seeing a mangled truck in the median. Oh my God. It took the top of that truck. The FAA says three people were able to make it out of the plane on their own. In this video, you see people running from the wreckage. The back half of the aircraft was more intact than the front, so I'm assuming if there were some survivors, it was likely the passengers. And Collins, a pilot himself, says the private jet's crew did all the right things to try to limit the amount of casualties. You don't think about yourself. You think about getting the plane to the ground safely, but, but first and foremost is what is the safest place for others, and then what's the safest place for me secondary to that. And the interstate barrier the carrier deserves credit too. Charred by the explosion, it likely protected the homes on the other side. They certainly did the right thing in my mind to, to save an awful lot of people and uh, I think they deserve kudos for that. Now, the victims' names have not been released at this hour. The plane was a Bombardier Challenger 600 registered to a charter jet company based in Fort Lauderdale. It took off today from Ohio State University's airport en route to Naples and it crashed just two or three miles shy of that airport. The sheriff's office says a six-mile stretch of I-75 will remain closed for at least 24 hours while the FAA and NTSB investigate. Mark? That is